a document. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to um, gra put a grasp on what could improve VR, and I'm coming up with a language of communication for VR because uh, VR, and I think it's the it's the it's because. Um, people have not researched proper communication uh, in respect to VR. It doesn't seem like there's been much research in it. Um, you know, as long as VR has been around, you would think that somebody would have put together together uh, a sort of a designer's um, key to creating good VR content for people. And I don't see it. I don't see it in the content that's provided on the App Store. Um, there's just, there's very good examples, but they're very, very rare. Um, you don't see very many good examples of VR content. And, um, and it's, it's more of people on YouTube that uh, don't realize that uh, there's a good way of presenting VR content. Um, but you have to keep in mind, it's, it's just the biggest thing of all is respecting your audience. And I'm not talking about respecting them as uh, like, like respecting their time or respecting their, their, their attention to what you're talking about or anything. I'm talking about respecting them, not doing that, you know, not holding their head, you know, not poking them in the face. That, you see, you have to protect the, you have to protect the head of the person. You have to protect their, their um, space. And, but you can't, but you gotta include them in the experience immerse them in the experience, but you've got to respect their limitations and what they're, what they're not able to do or probably not to able to do in the situation which they're in. And you have to kind of um, plan for that, okay, whenever you're coming up with VR content. And so I'm putting together a document and it isn't done and I'll just go through the entire document and point out all the things that I've got in there, but um, maybe through discussing it, I will um, be able to determine other things that I need to put in the document. But it's more a, it's more a, um, it's more a guide for those who create VR content and those who uh, create VR interfaces to, to think about um, uh, when they're trying to create stuff for consumers and for an audience that uses VR headsets. Um, so as to not piss off any more people. And, you know, if we don't treat the audience um, well, we can only expect that adoption is going to dwindle. And the amount of monies that could be made will not be made because, um, because we didn't plan our content appropriately for this audience. So I'm going to point out some of the reasons why you need to focus on this and, and uh, things to think about. And these come from my experiences in other, in, in, um, from years of being in college and um, taking courses on Media 101, where I had an Indian teacher and she was telling me the reason why in India they prefer to um, buy, they prefer to, to buy American TV shows as opposed to uh, making their own and things of that nature, you, after, talking with people as long as I have, you come to the realization that there is a lot of, there's a lot of things that can get overlooked. And 
And uh, there are a lot of good ideas, and I've always latched on to good ideas. That's that's what I what I really when I when I hear a good idea, it's like a pearl of, the, of something that I can hold on to and I, and I store in my brain, and someday I'll use it. So um, that's that's my position. Okay, virtual reality is a different medium, being that, okay, so I'm starting the, reading the document. Maybe instead of me reading the document, I'm going to have my, uh, my, um, I'm going to have my voice synthesizer do it, because uh, the voice synthesizer is so much better at this, and I'm so really bad at it. So I'm going to go and open up another document, or maybe I can make the voice of the soldier talking here. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into a document and then I'm going to have the voice of the soldier for it. So the, the, the voice of the soldier is called text aloud. I've used it for years. It's, it's very nice. Uh, it's commercial software. It's worth it. It's worth the investment. So a new article, and then I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to have this read this out for us. Okay, here we go. Change the audio to what is going on? Something's wrong. Oh, it's this stupid recorder over here. Let me get rid of that. See if it's gonna if it can play. No, it's not gonna do it. Exploder needs to be restarted. Windows Explorer needs to be restarted. There we go. Okay, here we go. reality is a different medium and being that it is immune to language and standards of communication all its own. It's due to a lack of respect for the audience that has led to its early demise. If storytellers in this medium are to succeed they must know how they are to express their vision in this art form and pander to the consumers of this new media. First rule of VR. The audience are not owls. Don't present media in a way that requires people to turn their heads excessively. This goal is achieved in two ways. Developers of the VR headsets user interface must offer methods of navigating 360-degree content without head tracking. 
Example slash ideas. Use the laser pointer hand controller to adjust the facing orientation of the headset user. Give users the ability to use rear view mirrors when detecting content behind them. Provide users with a small spherical radar of content within their visible space, to satisfy their need to know. Authors must keep all points of interest in front of the audience and present more content when the front is fully occupied. Example slash ideas. Look at Cirque du Soleil's circus presentation app that immerses the audience with plenty of content around them that they can revisit in the future playings. Examples of apps that ruin it for audiences, the game Virtual Virtual Reality which offers no easy way for audiences to orient themselves other than actively turning their heads, the animation crow which forces its audience to be aware of the full space, most 360 content that offers little incentive to navigate the content as they do not fill the space with enough stimuli to revisit the content in multiple viewings. Second rule of VR. Protect the audience from traumatic experiences. Oculus Go for example does not have a child lock to protect children from potent VR 180 porn. VR headsets offer parents no means of observing and controlling their children's use and behavior in VR. Authors abuse audiences' captive perception of content placing them in vulnerable situations that may leave the audience disgusted with the experience enough to shun future uses of VR altogether. Such authors should be industry blacklisted until they grow up or given a classification of being explicit the way ones have rated rap music content in the past so that those who seek to be exploited can easily find such content and those who don't, know what to avoid. Keep the audience's head in a protected space and be aware of the audience and respect their perception by keeping them safe from bothersome stimuli. Example, in videos avoid content where b slash flies are able to walk on the audience's nose, keep cameras on a tripod don't put them on tables unless you intend to behead the audience, don't shit on the audience don't toss their heads in a dumpster of trash, if it never happens in real life avoid doing it in virtual, and label such content so the consumer knows what to expect. Present content to the audience that is easy to flee, offer time navigation to permit the audience to quickly jump to safe content. Offer alternative experiences that are sensitive to the audience's needs. Discuss this topic. Rule 3 of VR. Make content that is relevant to VR, avoid representing postage stamp 2D content in an immersive 3D realm unless there is some incentive to the audience to do so. There is no longer a frame to put content in. Shun the old language of presentation learn the new method of communication. Hollywood will never respect VR, don't expect Hollywood to accept it. Reason cinematographers will shun VR. Telephoto lenses in stereo produce cardboard cutout perception. Nowhere to hide the camera crew. Filmmakers have to use macro slash fisheye lenses thus the cameraman is always traveling to the content. 2D image manipulation is easy to detect in 3D, thus CG is much harder to synthesize into shots. E.g. When using CG 3D artists cannot use bump maps as they appear painted on a surface in 3D, so surfaces must use height maps, CG that satisfy 2D perception can appear flat and lifeless in 3D therefore shaders have to be customized for a 3D perception. Limited transitions possible, fades and cuts only. Wipes become 3D effects, 2D wipes are distracting. Close-ups are a world unto themselves, filmmakers have to be very creative when wanting to use a close-up on anything cause it infringes on the audience's space. Multiple takes present more problems in spatial consistency therefore everything must be shot on same day and same time in same order, with same lighting, etc. Or the sets must be clean audience will be aware slash distracted by changes in the space. Due to, g, amateur actors challenge the perfection of cut as fewer takes can be taken, directors will feel like Edward when making movies as they will not be able to edit a movie to perfection. C-O-N-C airing, h, editors have new challenges and in most cases will become directors and planners, as editing VR content is harder than editing 2D framed content. One must be concerned with spacing of lenses as it can affect the perception of dimension however this could offer other possible forms of content, seeing things from ants, animals, or child's perspective, 
from Godzilla's perspective. Actors cannot use. Stuntmen, audience can see well enough to discern body types. Doubles, ditto. Step stools or other methods of framing actors of varying body types into a frame, the visual language of storytelling has to change. Sorry Danny DeVito. Guide wires, brain is smart enough to recognize when content is missing from a shot. Note, Tom Cruise realized this. With the challenge of presenting Mission Impossible in the VR space, therefore he is becoming a helicopter pilot and taking on his own stunts. Cautionary note, stuntmen will become stars in VR, actors will become stage performers in VR. People with talents slash abilities are the new stars, the audience is harder to fool so actors have to work harder to entertain. Benefits No need to change perspective, make multiple cuts, the audience will always be distracted by the environment, birds, sounds, etc., so the need to cut for the purpose of keeping the audience awake and satisfied will go away. Artists of VR will find other ways to keep audience enthralled or distracted, in an effort to fill the space more people will be needed, more art, more props, VR will drive a new economy Bollywood productions and the long lost art of the musical will gain a resurgence in VR, as it will discern big productions from small productions. Avatars of VR communities such as Altspace VR will come to the realization that having more MO cap to gain more believable bodies in the VR space will make them into DIY CG cinematographers slash actors as they solve the problem of MO cap, they become animators, filmmakers, at the very least a simple Oculus Go user is a one-armed puppet, most Muppets are and keep in mind a puppet artist uses a wire suspended hand that is not unlike the 3 DOF controller of a Go. I can see the Muppet Show making a comeback. Vaudeville will come back from the dead and overcome Hollywood. Gives new meaning to Night of the Living Dead. Cause of the vulnerabilities people have to being traumatized by VR, horror VR will be much more potent and effective than any 2D horror experience ever was. Horror fans will get to feel what it's like to be the victim in a movie, beheadings will be frequent, the audience will experience things they could not experience in a passive 2D movie. VR brings people together in ways no other medium has, it's more personal in nature. Okay, so, let me go back over that. Uh, he went through it really quickly, and I think I kind of fell asleep somewhere in the center of it. Um, so I'm going to go back over it. And I'll just talk a little. It says virtual reality is a different medium and being in that needs a language and standard of communication all its own. It's due to the lack of respect of the audience that that has led to its early demise. You see, people are already talking that VR is dead. Um, we know it's not. Um, it's just it's trying to start. It's trying to it's trying to gain speed and. People are exploring the medium and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And being someone who has been into 3D graphics for a long time, um, in the in my 30s, I got involved in doing lots of stereograms. I know what works for stereo content. And um, from having a VR 180 camera, I've experimented a little bit with this camera and have seen what can be done with it. I'm, and just, you know, just from being a, um, just having like watched lots of different content and taking film courses and uh, been into computer animation, I know what's possible and and uh, the communication that uh, the way that a storyteller tells it, you know, and, and how a film a film uh, maker does things. I'm not a filmmaker, but um, it neither was uh, when when uh, um, when um, what's his name George. Um, George, what's his name? The George that made the Star Wars series. Um, <laughs> can't remember his name. 
George Lucas. So when George Lucas got his start in filmography uh, as being becoming a filmmaker, his first film was just a bunch of photographs put together. And when he made Star Wars, that was like uh, somewhere around his third film. And um, he made a film in college. He got some money for it. And he took that money and put it forth towards... Uh, um, THX 11, uh, 7 or 38 or whatever. And then after that film, he came out with, um, with, um, American Graffiti, which was something like 5 million. And then after American Graffiti, he did Star Wars, which was $30 million film. And it drove him up the wall and made him that experience, um, before he could ever see what it was going to do when it released in the making of that film drove him to want to be a filmmaker, to go back to doing art film. He didn't want to do any more. He didn't want to work in the cinema. He didn't want to be a professional cinematographer or anything like that. He wanted to go back to filmmaking because it was just nerve wracking having to deal with all of the complexities of uh, making films. And it, after that film became successful, he realized that um, he could do it. He could keep doing it. And uh, and I think that's going to be the way it is with a lot of the VR people, people that uh, create VR content. They're going to realize that they can keep doing it. It's just a matter of getting over the hump of, of trying to... Um, trying to... Uh, trying to figure out the, 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 the method of communication, uh, the method of storytelling with VR. And um, they face a different challenge and old school cinematographers are not gonna be able to use their language that they used for communication in the 2D art form in the 3D, they're incompatible. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm going to stop this video and start it up again, because uh, this thing, uh, had, tends to overheat and so let me stop it and start it again.